Welcome to the Pennsylvania Athletic Trainers Society's broadcast of concussion management and care for the community. My name is George Roberts, president of the Pennsylvania Athletic Trainers Society. And today you'll be hearing from several individuals on the topic of concussion sustained by student athletes. When a traumatic brain injury occurs, a student athlete may have trouble returning to sport and the classroom. You will hear from several student athletes. Concussion expert, Dr. Ruben Echemendia and Pennsylvania licensed athletic trainers. Our hope is to better educate our viewers on concussion evaluation, diagnosis, and return to life. Thank you for tuning in and we hope you enjoy the program. Concussions occur from forces applied directly or indirectly to the skull that result in the rapid acceleration and deceleration of the brain and are most common in contact and collision activities. As licensed medical professionals, athletic trainers receive comprehensive training in concussion management. They are typically the first providers to identify and evaluate injured persons and are integral to the post-injury management and return to play process. Athletic trainers should be present at all organized sporting events at all levels of play and should work closely with a physician who is specifically trained and experienced in concussion management to develop and implement a concussion management plan. Athletes at high risk of concussion should undergo baseline examinations before the competitive season and any athlete suspected of sustaining a concussion should be immediately removed from play and evaluated by an athletic trainer or physician. When the rapid assessment of a concussion is necessary, a brief concussion evaluation tool should be used in conjunction with a motor control and symptom evaluation to support the physical and neurological clinical evaluation. Once a concussion diagnosis has been made, the patient should undergo daily examination to monitor the course of recovery. A concussed athlete should not be returned to athletic participation on the day of the injury, and no concussed athlete should return to physical activity without being evaluated and cleared by a physician or athletic trainer specifically trained and experienced in concussion evaluation and management. So my first concussion, uh, I was in high school my sophomore year, and my teammate tried to like clear the ball and it just smacked me right in the face. And so I had never had a concussion before so I didn't say anything to anyone. And then the next day at school, um, I forgot all my books to my first period class. Uh, I couldn't find my locker. I was just very confused so my friends turned me into my athletic trainer. I was gonna lie and say I was fine but the questions he was asking me I was not doing well on so he definitely knew I had a concussion. And then my second concussion I went up for a header and the girl just came and headed me and so I had a pretty big knot on my head. Uh, the symptoms weren't as bad for that concussion but I was still out like six weeks. Well for the first one I was definitely confused and like dazed and then for both of them like sensitivity to light and any computer screens, noise was a big one. It was definitely a hard six weeks that I was out. Um, it was very annoying. I was always tired and like irritable and fatigued. So I had to go a week without any symptoms at all before I was allowed to do like any phases. And then they just got more difficult to where I was um, cleared no contact. Still was fine like running sprints and stuff so then I could play contact again. In high school my athletic trainer definitely was there to keep every athlete safe and when I personally suffered from my first concussion in high school, he was there to make sure that he did the proper protocol and when he first evaluated me, he made sure that I stayed there in my seat while he called my parents so he knew that my parents knew and I wasn't hiding anything from them. So I think it's just very valuable that they are there every step of the way for you and like they have a very good communication process with your coach and your parents so that you're healthy. It's better to miss a few games than like the rest of your career for a concussion. So I would definitely tell them to like report it, know the symptoms, don't lie, take it seriously, and then you'll be recovered and back to normal. In a concussion, what happens is that there's acceleration and deceleration of the brain inside the skull. That causes a perturbation of the brain where it's moving back and forth. It also rotates on, on its side. 
and that rotation on its side sometimes can stretch the neurons. So it's that acceleration, deceleration of the brain that leads to the injury. The most critical aspect of this injury is to recognize and remove. And that is to recognize that an injury or a potential injury has occurred and to remove that athlete from the playing field. Typically it's an athletic trainer that's removing the player from the athletic field or evaluating the individual on the sideline. If during that evaluation a concussion is suspected, then that athlete should continue to be removed from play. And then a process begins for the return to play. It's not simply a one and done, it's a process that goes on over time. It used to be thought that we needed to rest the athlete until the athlete was completely symptom free. We find that that's no longer working and that in fact that makes the athlete worse. So the recommendations at this point in time is to rest for a couple of days and then slowly begin to increase the activity for this individual to return back to life. It's not just return back to play. One has to be very careful in terms of how that process is administered because if it goes on too fast or too much, it makes the athlete worse. Returning to the classroom is not dissimilar to returning to play, although more important in, in many ways. School is not only an academic experience, but it is also a social experience, and particularly in the younger ages, the longer you keep a kid out of school, the more problematic that that is for that individual. That's where neuropsychological testing can often be very useful to be able to determine the extent to which there are cognitive difficulties, and if there are cognitive difficulties, what kinds of academic accommodations need to be put into place in order to facilitate that athlete's progress. We don't know why some athletes take longer than other athletes. This is a very complicated injury. It's an injury that is in essence in many ways a moving target because of the pathophysiology of the injury. The injury changes over time. Genetics are involved, age is involved, the extent to which the individual has had concussions in the past is involved, how closely spaced those concussions are, what the symptom burden was of those concussions. All of those factors come into play, not to mention psychological factors that are also associated with this injury. Concussion in and of itself creates psychological and psychiatric issues, simply because it's, it's a brain injury and the brain manages all of these emotions. That also needs to be managed because if it's not managed appropriately, it then takes on a life of its own and becomes or turns into a post-concussion syndrome. I certainly believe that athletic trainers are well-trained in the treatment and management of concussion. I think the most important recommendation for a young athlete is to stay in your sport, enjoy your sport. There, is, there are a lot of beneficial aspects to playing a sport. But if you do get injured, the most important thing is to recognize the possibility that you've been injured, to get off the field, to report to your coach, to your athletic trainer, to your doctor, who's ever on the sideline, and if, they're, if none of those are on the sideline, to report it to a parent and to stop play. What I hear from athletes a lot of time is, oh, I just felt a headache, but you know, it wasn't a concussion. That's not your job. It's not your job to determine whether you have a concussion. That's for the professionals. Sports Safety International has partnered with the Pennsylvania Athletic Trainer Society to offer the Concussion Wise series of educational programs. These programs have been peer reviewed and are consistent with the latest science and practical applications regarding the prevention and management of concussion. Concussion Wise offers programs for athletic trainers, coaches, parents, athletes, physicians, and nurses. To access Concussion Wise and other concussion resources, please visit www.gopats.org. This will take you to the Pennsylvania Athletic Trainer Society homepage where you can find a hyperlink for concussion information. This will take you to the Concussion Resource Center. Under Concussion Education, you can find PATS Concussion Wise programs. This will take you to Concussion Wise where you can enroll as an athletic trainer, a coach, an athlete, a parent, a physician, and a nurse.
So freshman year, uh, I was at practice. We were just doing some drills where I was passing uh, volleyballs. Uh, I was hit in the forehead actually with a, a spike and my head whipped back and I uh, didn't get my hands up in time. And the next thing I remembered is I was laying on the floor and they were kind of pulling me off the court to the side and setting me up against the wall. And then my athletic trainer came over, some of my teammates came over and helped me out from there. I had a headache. Uh, the light in the gym was just burning my eyes. I had to pull my shirt over my face. Loud noises, some of the echoes in the gym hurt my head. And that was pretty immediate right after the injury. You, you don't see it coming, you know. It's just a, a quick injury that happens. It was just a simple drill that we were doing. You know, I didn't think I was in any danger. Men's volleyball, not usually a sport where you get career-ending injuries. So the light sensitivity lasted for a while. Um, I actually wore sunglasses around campus, even when it got pretty dark out. Couldn't really look at my computer. Um, it was hard to look at a cell phone. Uh, even just to show up in the gym was tough with the concentration, watching practice, some of the loud noises just kind of disturbed my, my mind a little bit. So I saw our neurologist, our team physician. Um, they did a lot of just testing to make sure most of my cognition was still there. Uh, made sure my vision was okay, hearing was okay. And then from then on, it was just regular checks with my athletic training staff, regular checks with our team physicians, uh, physical therapists here on campus. So it was about a month and a half until um, all my scores on all the tests were low enough for me to try to return to sport. Um, the first time I tried, I thought I did well, went back to my dorm that night, got really nauseous, lightheaded, actually ended up throwing up again, so I had to restart the whole uh, concussion protocol over again, so that was a frustrating process. It was hard to say, like, I don't think I'm ready, I don't think I'm ready, because there's not really a lot of external signs at that point, once you're farther along, but really you can just feel for yourself, so I think other people looking at you are saying, like, I think he's ready to play, but you know within yourself, like, I don't think I'm ready to try yet. Our team physicians, our athletic training staff did a good job here of really educating me on the process of it all. So coming out of it, I was definitely uh, pretty knowledgeable on the subject. Reporting is definitely an issue in a lot of other sports and kind of seeing what I went through myself, um, I can see why it is important for guys to come forward and girls and say that they are experiencing these symptoms because they can be long lasting, they can have effects longer than what they might think. They'll be able to help you and if you do have a concussion then you can work from there and get through that process and if you don't then it's something you can just clear off the books. Return to Learn is of equal importance as Return to Play. Both physical and cognitive activity requires brain energy. After a student athlete sustains a sports-related concussion, the brain may need rest from both physical and cognitive function. Like Return to Play, it is difficult to provide recommendations for Return to Learn. The student athlete may appear physically normal, but may be unable to perform as expected due to concussion symptoms. Return to Learn should be managed by a multidisciplinary team of physicians, athletic trainers, coaches, counselors, neuropsychologists, administrators, teachers, school nurses, and disability service representatives. The level of multidisciplinary involvement will vary on a case-by-case -case basis. All schools should have a designated academic point person who is aware of the concussion management protocol. This person may have varying responsibilities, such as notification of academic personnel when a student athlete enters a concussion management protocol. The first step of return to learn is physical and cognitive rest. Relative cognitive rest involves minimizing potential cognitive stressors, such as schoolwork, video games, reading, texting, and watching television. The period of time needed to avoid class or homework should be individualized, and the gradual return to academics should be based on the absence of concussion symptoms. If the student athlete cannot tolerate light cognitive activity, he or she should remain at home. Once a student athlete can tolerate cognitive activity, he or she should return to the classroom, often in graduated increments. At any point, if the student athlete becomes symptomatic, the athletic trainer and physician should be notified and the student athlete's cognitive activity reassessed. Recovery times for concussions is individual. For those student athletes who continue to have symptoms, academic adjustments may be required. The successful implementation of Return to Learn depends on the recognition that concussion symptoms vary widely among student athletes and even within the same individual who may be suffering a repeat concussion.
An athletic trainer's role in concussion management really starts with identifying that there is a concussion. And that includes a sideline assessment and includes identifying what types of signs and symptoms the athlete's being presented, presenting you with. And also it then identifies how to get into the return to sport protocol. And then further defining, is this athlete going through um, any exertional training and then are they having trouble that's lasting longer than the expected time frame and if it is lasting longer than what needs to happen is a team approach and an interprofessional care plan should be put into place to make sure that that um, patient is getting the best possible health care. Any return to play protocol or return to sport protocol for a concussion is based upon different phases during the process. So the first phase is kind of known as the acute phase, where essentially an athlete needs to rest about 24 to 48 hours after sustaining an acute concussion. And then what happens is we go into what's known as a daily function kind of phase, where we want to make sure they're symptom free for a minimum of 24 hours, where they're able to do activities of daily living maybe returning to school, maybe functioning, walking around campus, things like that. And the next phase is really a smaller, low functioning exertion. They don't do anything that is weightlifting in nature or any vigorous activity, but maybe it's walking on a treadmill, maybe it's biking. The third phase is going to be an exertional phase where maybe now they start a little bit more vigorous activity. However, it has to be graded to where they can't be symptoms. So they have to be asymptomatic for 24 hours. The fourth phase of the functional return to sport is going to be where they do some sport specific drills where they're exerted more. And then the fifth phase is going to be non-contact drills that are very sport specific. And then the final phase is going to be a contact drill where they go in and they return to their sport with an athletic trainer watching them, making sure that they don't have any symptoms again. And then after they've successfully completed all six of those phases, then they are able to return to sport. Some of the new consensus statements that have come out have said that an average course of treatment is between 10 to 14 days for an adult, and it's about a month for anybody younger than 18 years old. And so if we know that they have persistent symptoms that don't seem to be resolving and or they're not able to get through a protocol or they're having trouble with academics, um, they have cognitive difficulties, then we definitely want to work with a team and manage a concussion with maybe um, a neuropsychologist maybe a physical therapist, an occupational therapist. Everything needs to be managed within an individual in a team approach if necessary, especially if those are symptoms that are persistent throughout the course of the injury. When an athlete goes through something where they're removed from the sport that they love for an extended period of time, there's a lot of psychological issues and mental health problems that can occur. And so I think that's a very important component that needs to be um, identified early on to make sure that that athlete is getting the best health care possible. The best thing I would tell an athlete if they've sustained a concussion or they thought they had is really make sure you tell somebody about it, number one. Number two, think about who your support groups are, your friends, your family, your athletic trainer, maybe your coach, um, what, what other people that surround you that can help you. And the other thing is if you need help, don't be afraid to ask for it. And so if they're having trouble reading, if they're having irritability issues, if they feel like they're mad or depressed, it's really important to make sure you tell people how that is affecting you because then you're able to get the best possible care. hard hit. Do you want me to get Gina? Gina! Hey, are you alright? You okay? Let's get you over to the sideline. All athletes experience an extreme amount of pressure to succeed. They receive pressure from their coaches, teammates, parents, and even teachers. They also have internalized pressures of wanting to be the best, to tough it out, and not wanting to let anyone down. It is important to remember the seriousness of brain injuries and the risk of getting hit again before an initial concussion has healed. Please, report your symptoms to the nearest athletic trainer, coach, or parent. If you feel like your teammate may be lying or hiding symptoms, it is important you report it. You may be saving a life. I was actually in practice here and 
um, we were doing a drill and I was playing offense and someone was defending me. Uh, I went to shoot the ball and a girl accidentally elbowed me in the face. Ended up almost breaking my nose. I just remember going underwater and coming up and people were like, Lonnie, your nose is bleeding. And I kind of blanked out. I didn't really remember that I got hit in the face. I first got a headache and then uh, I was really fatigued and tired all the time. I got really mentally foggy. Uh, I was confused. Uh, what I wanted to say wasn't coming out how I thought it would. And like a lot of the time, uh, I was filling out forms and I would write that I lived in the wrong city with the wrong state and um, just things like that. Everything became a lot harder. I had a few teammates that uh, said, hey, we really need you this weekend, maybe don't say anything, while others would be like, hey, you need to be honest about this. Like the side effects later on are a lot worse if you don't report it. So uh, I ended up reporting it, which is for the best. It was really hard to keep up with all my work, especially things on the computer screen and um, sending emails. Uh, papers were really hard to write. After you stare at a screen for a while, you'd get a headache. Set me back in school a little bit. I had to make up a lot of work after the concussion was over. I was out of my sport for a while as well. Everything came a lot harder because I was really tired. So our athletic trainers would check in with me every day. Um, I would go see them and then we would fill out a form uh, going over each sign and symptom that I had had uh, throughout the past 24 hours. They just constantly checked on me and I mean my nose was messed up as well. I had a big bruise on my face so they are just kind of making sure that the injury of my nose was okay as well. I had to be asymptomatic um, for 24 hours and then I was able to start a certain phase. It took me about three weeks to get to the first phase where you take a computer test. After that, each phase you would progress uh, into something more physical. So this the second day, I think we did 10 minutes on the bike. Um, slowly throughout the phases, I think starting with the last two phases, I would go back into my sport with no physical contact and then the last phase, uh, full practice. Starting that, it took about five days. And then if I didn't pass any of those phases or had symptoms after that, got a headache after one of the phases, I would have to move back a phase and basically restart. I would definitely say to report it. Um, try and rest as much as you can and stay off the screens. Um, be really honest about all your symptoms throughout the whole process. Well, the Safety and Youth Sports Act was passed a couple years ago, and the education and awareness that's brought to coaches and players, and, and especially parents, has been very positive. We kept it generic to make sure that um, the appropriate professionals are the ones providing the care, um, and, and athletic trainers are absolutely um, the appropriate professional when it comes to the practices and games to do to do return to play. There's uh, obviously been an increased awareness over time regarding the exposure that uh, athletes in general um, in sports mainly at the scholastic level in terms of risk have to uh, concussions and the act was specifically designed in order to respond to that reaction. We, we do a lot of outreach and meetings at the beginning of the school years. Um, in the law, um, we recommend schools to have this discussion at the beginning of each, each sports season with, with uh, the parents and the players. And we just have to make sure that coaches are taking it serious and officials are taking it serious. Um, the Safety and Youth Sports Act is regarding public schools, but we did put in language to encourage club sports to adopt similar policies. The biggest challenge, number one, is just making sure parents and coaches know the seriousness of head injuries. Even a minor um, ding to the head can be something that can turn into a, a really serious problem. We provide support in terms of, in terms of funding for these different programs, but the decisions on whether to employ athletic trainers and use them as part of their overall sports program, uh, we believe it's most appropriate for school districts to decide that. So a school, school that doesn't happen to have um, a certified athletic trainer could really go anywhere that has a medical professional that's qualified to, to manage a concussion injury. It could be their family practitioner, a hospital, um, someplace off, off site from the, from the school location. But, you know, there's, there's definitely a lot of options that the, the athlete could pursue. So if there is uh, concern regarding the, 
actual application of this law in any school district and uh, any interested party in a school district believes it's not being enforced appropriately. Of course, the first place is the governing body of the school district, but then after that it's the Department of Education at the state level. And uh, that's another place that can be looked to in order to enforce the law. There's always um, a priority among many of us in the legislature to make sure that um, athletic trainers are in every school district in, across the Commonwealth and we'll keep uh, pursuing that goal. I think the National Safe Play Act it will treat concussions, but also um, heat stroke and many other different um, sport-related injuries that, that young athletes and athletes of all ages face. So I think it's a, a great bill that was introduced, um, but it's a much broader, you know, a piece of it is regarding concussions, but really any, um, any injury that could happen uh, while playing sports is addressed in the, the National Safe Play Act. And I think it would just draw that much more attention and more resources to, to help our local Pennsylvania athletes. But in terms of its acceptance, which is the most important thing regarding whether a law is uh, going to be followed and going to be beneficial to the public, I, we've seen a, tr a tremendous amount of support for the law. We'll be reviewing it to make sure that things can be done to improve it, but at this point, point in time, I think it's, it's, uh, it's a real good shape. The, the Pennsylvania Athletic Trainers have been a great champion for, for protecting our kids and I look forward to continuing to work with them to, to pass legislation in the future that continues to do that. Uh, when I was growing up and playing competitive sports when I was in, uh, in high school, the understandings about this were minimal. You know, you, you um, might have had a, a collision with another athlete when you were playing, you just got back in. You know, obviously now we understand a lot more and the National Safe Play Act is going to just complement that increased focus on the safety of our, our children when they're, in, when they're in competitive sports, and that's very important. This program was made possible by the Pennsylvania Department of Health Traumatic Brain Injury Implementation Grant, provided by the United States Department of Health and Human Services Administration. We hope you enjoyed hearing the numerous testimonials from our government representatives, student athletes, athletic trainers, and concussion experts. It's imperative that your schools and organizations work to create and implement a concussion management policy. These policies should be reviewed with all parties annually. Licensed athletic trainers are experts in concussion management, prevention, and education. Again, we encourage you to report any and all symptoms of a concussion or head injury to your athletic trainer. If your school does not have a licensed athletic trainer, talk to your school board and show them this broadcast. Our job is to protect our patients by educating and developing effective prevention and management programs for concussions. Thank you to all who made this broadcast possible. The PA Department of Health, Pat's Public Relations Committee, Mega Media Factory, St. Francis University, Phil Hensler Photography, University Orthopedic Center, and Excella Health. For more information on concussion education and management, please visit gopats.org.